so today I thought I would do a career, work, life kind of related q and I did something similar on my blog a couple of weeks ago and loads of you asked for a part two. So here it is. I thought I would try it in video form and I asked you guys for questions on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and there were tons. So I picked out ten and I'm going to answer them for you now. So the first question comes from Poppy Mullins on Instagram and she asked, what was your first job and how old were you? So I was 16 when I got my first job and it was for a well-known baby store in my city centre and I absolutely loved it. I really enjoyed working in retail. I worked there for about four or five years, kind of on off, because I used to come back in my university holidays and work there in the holidays, and it was just such a good job. It was really fun. I really enjoyed visually merchandising all of the dummies, as you can imagine, and the people who worked there were so nice. I worked with some amazing people, some people that I'm still in contact with today, so have very fond memories of that job. The next question comes from Emily Fox on Twitter, and she asked, graduation is very much in sight for me and having a career decision crisis. How did you rule out slash narrow down career paths? Now I think this is a really good question because I remember being 21 and being like faced with that big decision and that big life moment where you kind of don't know what to do. I've been there, I've done that. <laughs> and I feel like in terms of narrowing things down, I went to uni and I studied psychology. So when I went to uni I thought, oh I'm going to be a counsellor, I'm going to be a relationship counsellor or something like that. And I kind of assumed that I would go into further education after my degree and, I don't know, do a PhD or Masters or something like that. And then as I went through my course and I probably wasn't enjoying it as much as I thought that I would, I realised that I didn't really want to do any further education after uni. So that was the first thing that sort of like, didn't want to do any further education, didn't want to spend any more money on education, so that kind of sliced it down a lot. And then when I was in my final year, all of my friends were applying for grad schemes for like big companies. I applied for a few of those but I wasn't still really sure what I wanted to do. And then I just had this moment where I realised that I just wanted to love the industry that I was in, I wanted to love the company that I worked for, so I was like, I want to work for Mac and work in their HR department or something like that. I just really I remember sitting with my dad and chatting to him and I was like, I just want to work for a company that I love. So when I graduated, I had a job in a call centre just because I was like, I need to have a job, I can't graduate with no job. So I worked there for approximately two and a half weeks, I think it was, and then I decided that I wanted to do some beauty PR internships because I was like, I love beauty and even though my degree isn't directly related to kind of PR or marketing or anything like that I felt like the skills that I'd learned from my blog because I'd had my blog for a year or two then could kind of help me and in the end I did some beauty PR internships and got kind of into beauty PR and beauty editorial work and that was just through working for startups having experience in different internships and kind of giving a lot of things a go and saying yes to a lot of opportunities so I know that doesn't directly answer your question but I would just say do internships if you can I was lucky enough to be able to do them for a couple of months. I just couldn't have any space in case breeze while I was doing them and just get as much experience as you possibly can and that way you can work out what you love, what you enjoy and kind of try and follow that route. Christine Rust on Instagram asked, how did you get started on YouTube and what was your career life like before you were blogging and making videos? So I got started on YouTube approximately six months after I started my blog which I think was back in 2010? That's a long time ago. But I'd had my blog for a while, I just wanted to give YouTube videos a go. And then in terms of what my career life was like before blogging on YouTube, I worked in retail, I worked in bars when I was at uni, I worked in the student union, which for someone who is terrified of people being sick, was definitely not the best job, but I actually really enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't good either because I normally like getting to bed really early and it was super late nights, super loads of sick, but really good fun, really good people that I was working with again. I worked in call centers, I worked in admin, I kind of did a bit of everything. The next question comes from Adoya on Twitter and she asked, what was the point when you realized you could be a blogger for a living? Now, this question was asked a ton, so I thought this was definitely something that I should talk about. Now, for me, I was working in beauty editorial and beauty PR and I'd managed to get a job where I was working three days a week doing that and then doing two days a week on my blog because I was sort of earning money through like advertising on YouTube and my blog but not really like a ton like me and Mark had just moved to London there was no way that it was going to be able to pay my rent or support me or anything like that so I thought I'd find this job where I sort of did part-time on the job part-time on the blog see how it went it was really good I was really enjoying the two days a week that I was putting into my blog and because I was putting a bit more time to it I was seeing a bit more growth a slightly more money coming in so that was definitely increasing and then after six months of doing this part-time job I was basically 
basically told that I either had to give it up completely or work full time. And that was my big deciding moment. If I could see my old boss right now, I'd kiss him on the face and say thank you so much because sometimes you need that push in life. It definitely wasn't the right timing financially wise. I wasn't really making enough to pay my half of the bills and rent and all that kind of stuff. But Mark was really sweet and definitely helped me out for a few months until I kind of got on my feet with it all. It was kind of terrifying and it's always really scary to like go out on a whim and go it on your own. But I'm really pleased that I made that decision in that moment because now I love what I do. I appreciate that I get to do what I do every single day. I've had jobs that I didn't really love too much in the past. So I love that I have a job, if you can call it that now, that I truly thoroughly enjoy. Jodie Melissa Moores on Instagram asked, was there one thing you noticed that made a difference in the progress of your blog or was it slow and steady? Now I feel like me, I've been doing this now for six plus years. I think I must have just had my like six year anniversary with it all. And for me, it's definitely been slow and steady, but I love having it that way because I feel like I've got a really lovely audience. You guys are always so nice. And I feel like we really get each other, which is really nice. But the one thing that I did notice that kind of made a difference growth wise was just blogging every single day. I still post on my blog every single day, 7 a.m. GMT, be there or be square and also I post twice a week so I find that consistency for me has worked really well I post at the same time every single day I post these videos at the same time on a Wednesday and Sunday you guys know that and you're here and you're ready and waiting and I definitely think that makes a difference I feel like consistency is really key when it comes to growing in the world of blogging and YouTube the next question comes from Lily Pebbles on Twitter. She said she was very excited for this video because like career chat is her thing. So hope you're enjoying it, Lily. Hope I'm doing it justice. She asked, although you now work for yourself, how do you feel your previous work experience has affected how you work now? I think that's a really interesting question because obviously what I do now is completely different to what I studied or my previous kind of work experience. But I feel like it's all kind of combined and mushed together and made me into the person that I am today and given me the work ethic that I have today. Things like my psychology degree, for example, there was a lot of writing going on there so I feel like that really helped me develop my writing skills it was very analytical too which I feel is like why I'm quite a solutions based kind of person my retail experience has definitely helped me with my people skills which comes in really handy when I'm meeting people and also for like working under pressure because working in retail is really hard especially on a Saturday working in startups has really helped me with the ability to multitask and then working in bars means that I can pour a pretty good pint if I say so myself I always try to do the little clover on the top of Guinness. Never worked that one out, but a pint, yeah, I can kind of do that. <laughs> what Lid did on Instagram asked, worst part of your job and what changes would you like to see? Now, loads of people asked this question. Loads of people were like, what's the worst thing about what you do? And I guess, that's the question that I would want to know as a viewer as well because it can obviously seem quite like perfect, quite idyllic, this like blogging life that we're all just like blogging in our cashmere socks all the time <laughs> and eating avocado on everything. It's not really like that in real life. I feel like the worst part about what I do, there are so many good parts and they completely outweigh like the kind of semi one bad thing. And for me, it's that I'm a one man band. I write all of my content, I film all my videos, I edit all my videos. And so for me, I'm a one man band. I don't really have any colleagues. I'm so lucky to have people like Lily in my life who kind of is a colleague for me, just to have someone to like bounce ideas off of. But for me, I'm quite a sociable person. I like being around people and being on my own kind of all day. Some days it's really good, you can get a load of stuff done and some days Mark comes home in the evening and I'm like a little puppy that's like been on my own all day and I just need to talk for like two hours at him, just like tell him everything that's happened today. So I do miss having colleagues, especially around Christmas when there's like loads of rowdy Christmas parties where people like photocopy their bums. I'm not sure if that actually happens in real life, but I'm always so jealous of that. And when my friends bitch and moan about their colleagues, I'm like, you have colleagues, be grateful we have colleagues because it's nice to have someone to talk to sometimes. <laughs> Clarissa Famosa on Twitter asked, what is your advice for new bloggers? I would say write a blog that you would want to read. That is like my ultimate piece of advice for whether you're making YouTube videos, whether you're writing a book, whether you're doing whatever, whatever you are creating, make sure that you would want to be watching, listening, reading to it at the same time and just write or make videos or whatever about whatever you have a passion in because someone out there also has that same passion too. You might not think it, you might feel like the only one in the world who loves rare stamp collecting, for example, but I'm sure there is someone out there who also collects rare stamps as well. So yeah, just write about whatever you have a passion in because you can't fake passion. If you don't have passion for it, you don't love it, people can tell and people will tune out. So I always feel like write, make videos, create about things that you really love and you really have a passion for. Anna Galliano on Instagram asked, if you could start your blog again, would you change anything about it? Yes. I would, I would change the name for sure. Viviana Does Makeup is something that I came up with six years ago, back when I was a student at uni and I was terrified that anyone would find this like weird corner of the internet that I had created. And now I don't care 
everyone knows about it, it's not really a secret anymore, so hence the Viviana, Anna is my name, kind of added the Vivi because I wanted it to be my name but not my name so that no one would find it and I kind of cringe whenever I have to say that my blog is called Vivian does makeup, so change coming soon, which I'm very excited about. A slight tweak, nothing to be scared of, but just something that won't make me cringe when I have to like tell a taxi driver what the name of my blog is. Then the final question comes from Tanita Merjam, and she asks, what was your dream job as a child, and would you still want to do it now? Now, my dream job as a child was definitely to be just like a general pop star, so I would have settled for backing singer, backing dancer, being in a girl group, being a solo singer, whatever. Would I want to do it now? No, because sometimes I sing when I'm in the car, like really, really loud, that's like when I give it some welly, and my voice just, I'd, I would have those like voice nodule things, like I would be out after like a year of singing, I just can't sing for that long. Also, can't actually sing that well, <laughs> which is a bit of a sidebar to that. I would definitely be up for being like a backing dancer, I just think that looks so cool, like the baggy trousers, like little vest tops. Again, not really that great at dancing, so probably wouldn't have worked out. Out. So maybe backing dancer would still kind of be up for that. Maybe I should try some dance classes, but singer, definitely not. So that concludes this little Q&A. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Something a little bit different, and if any of you have any more questions, then do pop them below. I will try my best to get back to you. And also check out the blog post that I did that was like a part one, because that probably has some things in there that I didn't talk about in this video. So I'll link that top line in the description box for you as well. But thank you so much for watching. Good luck in whatever you decide to do in life. I hope it makes you happy, and best of luck with it all, and I will see you on Sunday with a brand new video. Bye!